Hi everybody and welcome to this video all about the A320 fuel system. Now first of all my apologies for the very long hiatus between videos. I'm afraid that the real world just caught up with me to such an extent that I was unable even to start the sim. That's how busy I was. I'm grateful to those of you who have subscribed or have maintained your subscriptions during the hiatus and I assure you that the channel's not dead. Uh, you may just find that there are big gaps between videos. I'm hoping to do plenty more in the A320, the Q400, looking at the 747 as well, which is a, an amazing sim. So I hope you enjoy these videos. I know they're not the most beautiful or visually stunning sim videos out there. I'm not a very good editor, unfortunately. But nevertheless, I hope these videos enhance your simming experience and, of course, that you enjoy them. So keep subscribed. There's plenty more to come. So, the fuel system. It's very straightforward, fortunately. The A320 has a centre tank in the fuselage, as well as inner and outer wing tanks. Total capacity, depending of course on the fuel density, is somewhere in the region of 14 and a bit tonnes. You can't see them on the ECAM screen, but there are also what we call vent surge tanks. These are outside of the outer tanks. So if they were depicted on the ECAM screen, they'd be shown here, thereabouts. And these simply allow for possible fuel expansion in increased temperatures. And make sure that when the fuel does expand, it can uh, leave the outer tanks without spillage so the fuel will then simply drain into the vent tanks and this is done entirely automatically. Each tank, that is to say each inner wing tank and the centre tank, has two pumps shown by the square shapes here. In normal circumstances each inner tank provides fuel to its respective engine and when there's fuel in the center tank one pump in the center tank feeds its respective engine. The logic is such that the center tank fuel depletes first then the inner tank fuel and when the inner tank fuel reaches a figure of 750 kilos then the outer tank fuel is automatically transferred into the inner tanks and when this occurs you will see a legend appearing on the upper ECAM screen. Cross feed valve shown in the center here allows one engine to be fed by both tanks or two engines to be fed by one tank alone. Uh, this would be achieved by selecting the cross feed and turning off the fuel pumps on the side that had the lowest quantity and this would be done for example if there was a large imbalance between one inner wing tank and the other. You can also see the low pressure fuel valves shown here and these are closed automatically either if the master switch for the engine is turned to off or the fire push button is depressed. The fuel page on the ECAM shows the fuel used by each engine, fuel used by, by both engines, the operation of the fuel pumps and the cross feed valve, the quantities in each tank cumulative fuel flow for both engines and the current fuel on board. It also shows the fuel temperature for each tank and an advisory on the ECAM will be triggered if these temperatures drop below minus 40 degrees or if they increase above 45 degrees in the inner tanks and 55 degrees in the outer tanks. Fuel panel on the overhead has the master switches for each 
fuel pump and don't forget of course that these master switches should be selected off during refueling and only selected on once refueling is completed. There's also the cross feed valve push button which when depressed shows a green open light in the push button to show that the cross feed valve has successfully opened. And I'm now going to give you a quick demonstration example of how the cross feed system will be used. Just to give you an example of how the cross feed would work, you can see at the moment we've got a really quite big imbalance between the left and right inner wing tanks. One's got uh, nearly 2600 kilos, one's got 800. So to remedy this situation we're going to go over to the fuel panel, select the cross feed valve open, you can see the open green light now illuminates in the push button and then select the lightest sides fuel pumps off you can see now that the cross feed valve is open and so the right inner tank is feeding both engine 2 and engine 1 once the fuel had been correctly balanced we then turn on the fuel pumps and deselect the cross feed. Also on the overhead panel we have the mode select push button which is usually in normal circumstances left in the automatic position and this controls how the center tank pumps operate. In automatic mode, the centre tank pumps run at engine start for two minutes, if there's fuel in the centre tank of course, and stop five minutes after low level is reached. This automatic operation of the fuel pumps can however be manually overridden, if required, using the push button. There are also several refuelling points on the A320, and these points have refueling panels. FS Labs actually includes a panel to help with ground operations and refueling in the sim. So I thought I'd show you what the panel looks like and how it works. At the top of the panel we have the quantities for each of the tanks. The high level lights illuminate if excessive fuel level is detected during refueling, in which case the refueling valve will automatically shut off. The refuel valves can be used by taking the guard off to either open the refuel valves for each tank or to shut them. When the switches are left in the guarded normal position refuel valves are operated automatically. Mode select switch allows for the option either of refueling the aircraft, which is the, uh, the top option, or defueling it, so removing fuel from the tanks. And this would usually be done if there was excessive fuel loaded or if the fuel loaded was uh, contaminated. Normal operation of the panel consists of selecting the quantity of fuel required with the quantity switch. So I'm going to increase the pre-selected setting to 11.5 tons. And you can see at the moment we have an actual fuel figure of 5 tonnes. Once we have the correct fuel figure pre-selected we're going to take the guard off the mode select switch and then select the refuel option. See now the quantities are increasing, you see there's quite a significant imbalance which I deliberately set earlier on but the quantities are increasing as is the total fuel quantity 
on board. Also, when the refueling process is going on, inside the cockpit, on the upper ECAM screen, there's a refueling legend. And you need to make sure that when this is occurring, the fuel pumps are deselected, so switched off. And also, you may want to consider having the seatbelt signs turned off as well. And this is to ensure that the passengers aren't belted up while they're boarding and uh, entering the aircraft during the refueling process so that if there is some kind of fire risk or fire situation um, during the refueling process they can be very quickly evacuated. Test switch allows for the testing of the lights on the panel and the high level lights as well. And the battery power switch allows us to power the panel from the batteries rather than ordinary AC electrical power via hot bus one should this be required. You can imagine that this might be needed if for example there's no fuel in the aircraft and we don't have external power so we can't start the APU until we've got fuel in the aeroplane in which case we'll need the batteries to power the fueling panel until we get some fuel in it and we can start the APU. Once the fueling complete, the end light will illuminate in green or it will flash in green if the refueling is aborted. That's it, that's a whistle stop tour of the a320 fuel system i hope it was useful uh, as i say i hope you enjoy these videos please keep tuned because there's plenty more to come and i'm very sorry for the delay between videos but thank you very much indeed for watching and subscribing and uh, stay tuned thanks folks